G'day team, here we are at the beginning of the end. A few videos ago I mentioned that in the uh, in the series of ribbons that we have up here there's about 300 buttons and we've uh, we've made it all the way through to the last ribbon now, the modify ribbon, so we're pretty much there. After this uh, this video I'm going to go through a couple of little, like the little tool, toolbars and functions down here a little bit about the properties and project browser and then we are ready to actually uh, actually get started I mean if this was a if this was a video about cars we would have sat in the car and I would have said here's the you know here's the gear stick there's the brake here's the the dashboard but we haven't even turned the car on yet so soon soon we're gonna hear that engine going and we're gonna start flying. Okay, so let's kick this off with the uh, the type properties button. This is just gonna bring up the, the type properties of whatever you have selected. And if you have nothing selected, it's gonna bring up the type properties of the view. So, type properties in there. If we select this wall and go edit type, it brings this dialog box up. If we select the wall and then click up here, it's the same deal. The type properties is, it's, it, you know, as with all things, there's a lot kind of to it. Each uh, each element has a bunch of different options. Like, you know, you can go into different views, section modifiers. You can go into edit sweeps and reveals, split regions, assign layers. There's there's a lot which goes into the type properties of each element. So there's there's too much to go over in just an overview, but you know, each of these things will get the attention that they deserve in due time. So bear with me, but uh for the meantime, if you ever want to know what's the uh, kind of the information going on behind how something looks or how big or tall or wide it is it's probably going to be up in uh, edit type that's if it's a type parameter if it's an instance parameter it's going to be under these uh, these properties over here the difference being type parameter is if I was to change say this wall edit the type let's just make that something ridiculous like 750 See how it's it's just blown up all of those walls. Whereas, let's just go to Control Z because that was just a, a crazy example. If I was to change the top offset of this to five thousand, and then we go to our three D view. Well, if that wall wasn't attached, if we go detach top base, now you can see just that wall is 5,000 above the top offset of everything else. So instance parameter means it affects just that one instance. Type parameter means it affects everything of that type. Uh, this properties button here just toggles that the properties dialog box additionally control one if you hold that down, does the same thing. Paste. So if we were to copy something, go Control C. There's a bunch of different options for us to paste it. A really good one that I like is aligned to the same place. So if you're copying something from one view to another and you want it to be in exactly the same place, it's it's a great great little tool. So say for example we have a um, little text note here which is a, just a cool example if we were to copy this so we're in a first floor plan here go to our site plan go control V we have a bunch of options about where to paste it so we can drop this down go aligned to same place and then that is going to go in at the exact same spot despite the difference in scale as in the uh, the floor plan there and because it's justified, you know, the top top left corner, it looks like it's in a weird spot, but it's it's not. It's the same deal if we go Control V, 
drop this down, align to same place, same place. It's very, very worth assigning this its own keyboard shortcut. Keyboard shortcuts are an absolute superpower of this program, which um, I'll, uh, I'll make another video about, but yeah, get, get, get into your keyboard shortcuts and uh, that's a great one. So we have, uh, we have cut to clipboard and copy to clipboard. That's pretty much the same as cut and copy in pretty much any, you know, Word or Excel format, whatever. Anyway, everyone should be pretty familiar with, uh, with those two concepts. Match type properties is uh, it's a bit of an interesting one. Um, essentially, if you select, let's just use a door, for example, right? We go match type properties. We select the one that we like and then we'll choose one that we want to imitate that first one. So we can change those that garage door into exactly the same as the front door. Same deal as if we, I think those windows are all the same. Yeah, so let's say we wanna put this door out the front there. It's gonna play up with the walls, but you get the point. If you, uh, yeah, you can just use that to, to quickly change one thing from another. It's kind of similar to if you just selected it, went up to the, uh, the types, scrolled all the way through and then found the door that you like. It's just saving a few clicks out of that process really. So cut geometry is uh, if you've got like a void and you want that void to cut a hole out of the wall or similar similar kind of like geometric standards and then a similar kind of tool which is uh, yeah i'll just i'll just say it. similar is join geometry so join geometry is just going to remove or kind of apply that edge in between things so what's a good example okay i'll show you a much more kind of real life application of that join tool now so we have a uh concrete column here and a floor which is surrounding it or going around it the boundary of the floor is drawn like so the uh, the column isn't being natively like it, the floor is not being drawn around the column which is fine what we can do is if we use the join tool to join these two elements you can see the floor has cut out of the, uh, the pier, which is not exactly what we want, but we can press this little down, uh, down tab here, go switch join order and change the order in which those things are joined. And now that looks way better. Additionally, we don't have to change the, uh, the boundary of the floor. So it looks right. There's less work involved. Cause you know, if there was, if there was a bunch of these, you'd have to return the, the floor boundary around each of the columns, which is just a lot of work. This is, in my opinion, a much better way to do it. But yeah, just a good example of how, how the, uh, the join tool functions there. Okay, next up, we've got the, uh, the beam and column join. So say we've got a couple of beams. You can join them using a trim tool, obviously. So if we were to use trim, join them up, they're going to join like that, which is okay. We go to modify and then use the beam column join tool. You get these little arrows here and these arrows are gonna indicate the kind of the status at which the beam. So if we click that arrow, which is going, highlighting this beam going to the left, it's gonna punch it through like that. Or we can click this arrow and it's gonna move it like that. So these arrows kind of control which beam is, is being modified in which direction. So if you wanted them to, to miter in like a a join like this, then uh, yeah, you have to just use those little arrows to, to get that to operate. Wall join is a, uh, it's a very important tool to get your head around, especially so in Australia, very common, we'll do a brick veneer wall like this, which is um, going to be either 70 or 90 mil of stud, a small cavity, and then brickwork as the, just the veneer. So being a brick veneer wall, this has got three layers to it and the layers is what the uh, the wall join tool kind of controls i guess you could say so these look okay at the moment but if we were to do click this button click there it opens up this little 
ribbon up here, which is a, just a bunch of like previous and next configurations in either the but, mitre or square off configuration. And you've also got allow join and disallow join as well. So wall joins can kind of change at seemingly at will, but usually has a, a consistent reason. So if we were to select all of these walls, change the base extension to say negative 300, see how the wall joins have just gone kind of haywire on me there. So that's, that's relatively normal behavior. So go up here, wall join, click the corner there, we'll click mitre, and then that's gonna neaten that up. Same deal with butt here, you can go previous to next and it's gonna go through different configurations. Same deal with square off. So you have a bit of control over, over how the, the wall joins go together. Usually you'll be able to find something that will, uh, will look good enough for you. So this next one, join and unjoin roof. It's a bit of a, a bit of an interesting one. I'll, I'll just quickly throw a, uh, a roof together or a couple of roofs actually, just to demonstrate how it actually works. So we're just going to go standard hip roof there and we'll go create similar first floor. Yes. And then we'll do a little gable out the front here. So we'll turn off the defined slope there. Don't worry about if this is going too quick for you. This is obviously going way too quick for any kind of beginner, but yeah, so we've got a little gable out the front here and this is our main roof. So you'll notice that that gable, because it was just drawn as a rectangle is not going into this roof automatically. So what you could do is you could modify the footprint and you know work out where it's going to join and then, you know, draw some lines up there. So it meets or you can use the join unjoin roof tool, select this face, select the face that it's going into, and then it's just going to fill in that gap automatically. So it doesn't particularly matter if we've drawn this roof like this, it's still just going to fill in that gap. Same deal. If we were to move the roof up over to here, it's still, still going to work. This isn't the most functional tool in the world. I've, uh, I've tried to use it a few times and it's just said, nope. So uh, if it doesn't, if it doesn't work, you know, revert to the old fashioned way of doing things and just, just make it work however you can. But it's just a cool little tool to know about, I guess. So the split face tool, this will split the face of any element or wall, floor, roof, whatever. And you can then split it into a new portion. So like that little animation is describing. So say we were going to split this part of this roof and we're going to make a little box there. So this roof is still all the same thing. It's just this little, this little square in here, it's just slightly different. So you could apply a material to that space in there, which leads us directly into this next tool, which is paint. So paint is If you cast your mind back to the previous video where we briefly, briefly touched on materials, the paint tool is how you actually apply those materials to surfaces. So say we wanted to make this little portion of roof into masonry stone. That's how you would do it with the, uh, with the paint tool. Additionally, yin and yang, you've got the paint tool and you've also got the remove paint tool. So if you didn't like this, you can go remove paint and it's going to remove it. Split faces are a little uh, emotional, I guess you'd say. They're, um, they can be leaky if you, if you move walls or components which are attached to whatever face you've split, they'll sometimes just leak that hatch pattern or that material out to the rest of the wall. So just keep an eye on things, but yeah, you know, do your best. The demolish tool is heavily involved in phasing, which I briefly, briefly touched on in the previous video. So the demolish tool will take anything that is, you can pretty much demolish anything. It's just going to change whatever phase you're in at the moment is the phase that that thing will be demolished in. So say we were to demolish this roof, 
We can still see it because of the uh, the graphic settings, but if we select it, you can see that it was created in new construction. It was demolished in new construction. So the demolish tool, breaking news story, but it uh, it just demolishes things, and it's it depends on whatever phase this current view is in is going to be whatever the thing is going to be demolished in that phase. A little complicated, but hopefully uh, hopefully makes sense. So the move tool is that's that's pretty that's pretty day one stuff. Um, select something and then click the move tool or click the move tool then select everything or something it doesn't particularly matter in the order. Um, you'll notice that up here you've got constrain. If you have constrain selected, it's going to only let you move it in you know like upwards or sideways or up or down. It's very like constricted as to which direction you can move it in. If you had disjoin ticked, all of these dimensions and the tags and just everything that's associated with the wall is going to lose its association. So if we click up here, it says all of these elements are gonna be deleted. Moving things while disjoining them at a workings drawing stage for the project is always very, very sketchy because you're probably going to lose a bunch of dimensions in a bunch of different views that you can't even see at the moment. So generally you want to go, you want to have that deselected and constrain. Yes or no, it doesn't particularly matter, but you know, if we move it up here without either of those things ticked, then all the dimensions are still there and it's, it's a much more kind of functional move, but Sometimes you can't move like that, so you have to just join it, but it just, it just is what it is. So the, uh, yeah, the copy tool, relatively self-explanatory, click, space, click, it's gonna copy, similar kind of similar to like copy and pasting, but slightly different. You have a little bit more control um, and just underneath the copy tool is the array tool. So the array tool is quite interesting. So say we have this post and we want to array it. You've got linear and radial arrays. So linear just means it's going to go in a straight line. Radial means it's going to go in a circle. You can choose to go group and associate. It doesn't particularly matter if you do or don't, but it just means that they're all going to be associated and that will make sense in a second. So say we're going to have six of these columns between first and last. So if we go click here and then click there, it's going to automatically calculate the distance equally of six or eight of those columns. So remember how we had the option to associate. So now they are all in a group. So you can edit the group, which will edit one of them, or you can ungroup them which will remove them uh, from being in a group. Now they're just totally like disassociated from each other, which is not the end of the world, but might be something that uh, you want to consider. And you also notice that the, the join settings didn't quite copy along, but we've got the uh, rotate tool, which is going to rotate an element around an axis. So say we wanted to rotate this, if you select it, press space, it's going to bring up this little dialog box here. So the center of rotation is by default in the center of the thing. But if you press the space bar or you press place, you can choose the, or like the origin of the rotation. So say we were to place the origin here and now we're going to be rotating it based on this origin point. So we could move it around like that. Trim is a, trim is a bit of a cat's pajamas of, of tools. Um, very, very, it's one of those ones that you'll hotkey and then never click this button again, but you'll trim something like 500 times during a job. So say we have a wall here, have a wall here. That's gonna drive me nuts if that's in the wrong way. Uh, you can go trim and it's going to join them like so. Additionally, you can have trim extend multiple. So you're going to select what everything else is going to trim to, and then you can go through and trim the rest of those in. Very, uh, very handy little tool. 
a line is also a stupidly useful crazy useful tool it's that's one that i didn't use a ton when i first started using revit and then it all of a sudden just became something that i'd use a lot like if there was any way of aligning so i'd rather align something than move something if you know what i mean so if i if i wanted to line this wall up with here you could oh wrong button You could do that, you know, and wait for the little, like the blue justification line to, to show up, or you could just align and you know, it's, it's quicker. It's easier. I just prefer align is a, is an extremely, extremely useful tool. So we've got two kinds of mirror. You've got draw axis and pick axis. Pick axis is kind of silly. I, I always will just do draw axis. So if we're going to use the mirror tool, I'm going to select this, press space. And now when this little cursor turns up, that means that we can draw whatever axis we want this to be mirrored on. So if we want to mirror it up over here, you'd mirror along that axis. If you wanted to mirror it around a corner. So for example, if we want to put another one of this column, exactly the same distance from this one over here you could mirror it select copy and then draw the axis at a 45 degree angle and it's going to show up there versatile little tool to be honest um, but i'm talking about draw axis not pick axis pick axis just kind of makes no sense when you, you've got so much power behind draw axis so split sl split line um, we wanted to split this wall say for example this this part is going to be having a base offset of 500 and the rest is at zero you would just split it at whatever point you'd need there's additionally split with gap which is kind of like just cutting a hole in uh in the wall itself so this is still kind of joined. It's still one element. It's just like, has it like a split on a zero line. Whereas split with gap creates like a, an actual legit break in the elements. So I would usually use this one. This one kind of opens up a bit of a can of worms in a lot of applications. So whatever fits your purpose, run with that. So generally in my workflow, this is the kind of split that I would be going for. If this is what you want, then it's just good to know that that tool exists. So with the offset tool, 99% um, of the offsets that I'm going to do are going to be numerical because I don't like the kind of the non-control over this one. So if we wanted to offset this wall a thousand, you know, that's, that's all pretty, I'm sure you're understanding how that one works. The only weird thing about this one is if you can get into this weird loop whereas if you type something in here which is not numbers it doesn't let you get out of it until you've gone up there and then done an offset like you just you can't you can't get out of this without doing an offset it won't let you so you know just make up something let it do the offset delete it and then just quit there may be a way around that but yeah it's it's a weird one so if we were to pin something, so pin, pin is the next tool. If we were wanting this wall exactly where it is and making it really hard to move, we'd pin it. So it's going to make it so you can't just click and drag and move. Or, you know, I don't think you can even delete a pinned object. Yeah, it's just going to kind of safeguard it against accidentally moving. Whereas all of this stuff, we can just drag and smash over to the side there. No worries. But we can't if some the thing is pinned. So if you've got like a property boundary is a really good example. You'd probably want to start pinning property boundaries because you don't want to accidentally move them. So if we were working on this job and then someone accidentally goes like that, that's a big deal. That's a really, really, really bad mistake to make. And it's so easy to do. But if it's pinned, it's just harder to do. You'd have to very consciously unpin it and then you can ruin your day.
similar to offset, scale has two different options, I guess you could say. Okay, so with the graphical scale, if you've selected this box and you wanted this line to be the same length as this line, the first click would be to establish like a an origin point. Second click would be to establish the, the length that we're trying or aiming to modify. And then the third click is when you actually go through and change the, change the size. Whereas if you just knew that this box needed to be twice as big, you can go scale numerical two, and then it's twice as big or 200% or however you want to say it. And I probably should have mentioned too with pin, you've also, you can unpin it by clicking that or you can unpin something like this. And then for some reason, delete is stored away up here as well. So if you wanted to delete something, you can go there or you can just press the delete key or whatever hot key you've got set up. All right, continuing on, we've got a, we've got through the modify part of the modify ribbon. So now we're in view. So if we were to select this wall, we've got hide and view here. So if we wanted to hide by element, so element being just that wall or category being all of the walls, there's a couple of options there. So we'll say hide element for now, and it's just gonna hide. We've got this weird button up here, which is uh, displace elements. So it creates a view specific representation of model elements that can be displaced in the view. So if we were to select that button, then select this wall, this little uh, X, Y, Z modifier pops up and then we can drag, you know, drag the wall around move it out here. It's just, it, it's kind of, it's a bit bit weird. It's not something I've really touched on too much, but it's it, being view specific. It means that the wall's still there. That's the wall that we just grabbed, but it's still there in the model. But if we have a look at it in the 3D view, it's, it's floating up in space here. You can reset it and it's gonna go back home or whatever. So if you're having to explode views for whatever, or ex you know, explode something for whatever reason, like it just displayed, then there's that little button that does that. But to be honest, I've, I've never actually needed to do that for a job. So we've got override graphics in view here, which is similar to back in the view ribbon. If you remember that, you can also right click override graphics in view by element and category just by right clicking on something as well. If you click the section box button, so say if we're working on our floor plan, and we select our range hood or what is it? Yeah, it's just like a cooktop there and click the section box button. It's gonna isolate that in its own little section box in 3D view. So you can kind of see, oh, well, there's the cabinetry and the, uh, the bench tops there and there's a brick veneer wall behind it. So it's just useful for visualizing exactly what's, what's going on with what you're actually working on. And then if you wanna reset this section box, it's just over here to reset that. So line work, I, uh, I actually call this line weight, but it's actually line work. So I've been mispronouncing it for, for who knows long, but you can override the line or any line of, uh, of any item with whatever line style you want. So I explained in the manage ribbon video, what the line styles are and how to create new ones very briefly. But if we say, wanted to override the, see how this internal skin of the wall here is quite thick. You could do a line weight override, just a, like a thin line. I think that's gonna be a thin line. Yeah, let's go thin line. And with a few clicks, cause there's a couple of layers, it's gonna override that. So handy for when you're just trying to make something look how it needs to look without going into the object styles or especially if you you know if it's just that line or just that wall that needs to be overridden not all of them just a good little tool to know that it exists additionally if you have something showing up in an underlay so let's say we turn the uh turn the first floor underlay here so you can see that's the that's the fascia there i don't know if this is going to work so if we do line weight override which is lw by default line work. I keep saying line work because I've been saying that for years. So we say do an override for hidden lines. 
And then if we turn this underlay off, that that's still going to show up despite the fact that the underlay has not, well, is not displayed anymore. But if you override the line weight of something or the line work of something while it's an underlay and then the underlay gets turned off, it's still gonna show up. So do with that what you will, but that's some, uh, that's some handy information right there. So there's a couple of ways of measuring between references and along elements. And this is also just like another place where they've got the, a bunch of the dimensions, but yeah, you know, distance tool is, geez, there's nothing revolutionary about this. Measure between two references. So if we were working out how long that bench top was, what is it, 1359 or something? Yeah, it's just, it's just measure. Measure and distance are pretty much the same thing. So groups, groups, create groups. What would be a good example of creating some groups? So you can create a group in one view and then copy that group into another view. And because they're in a group, they're going to be the same. So let's just create a group out of these. Call it group one, doesn't matter. Okay, so say we copy this to our basement. Now, if these were just text boxes and I changed and they weren't in a group and I changed one of them, it would not reflect that on the first floor plan. Whereas if I changed one of them and they're in a group, it is going to be reflected in the floor plan. So if you want something like a detail item or a text box or, or whatever to be the same all across the project and smart enough that if, if you update it somewhere, it's gonna be updated everywhere else, it has to be in a group or if not like a legend or something like that. But the function of groups is that, that it's it, it, like, even if it's a detail item, it will still appear as it does in the group all the way across everything. So last but not least is one of my absolute favorite tools in this entire program because it's just so, so handy is create similar. So if we were to select this window, go create similar, we can just really quickly place another instance or another, another one of those windows there. So this is so much quicker than placing a window just by itself. So if we were to put a new window in, go to architecture, go to window, and then you have to scroll through and find the type. I mean, there's like eight types in this entire job. Normally you'll have about a hundred different window types. So you have to scroll through, you know, type in whatever the, uh, whatever the size that you wanted it to be in here, click there, and then you can place it. Or you can cut 15 steps out of that process by selecting an instance of that window that's somewhere else in the job. So say, you know, you know, there's one out here and go, okay, cool. We're going to put one near the kitchen. So I'm just going to go grab this create similar out the back done it's so quick and if you have that attached to a hotkey you're just you're going to fly with certain things but um yeah bonus information is this is how the the modify ribbon shows up automatically like this is just the, the standard one if you select something like say a window you'll notice that it turns green and says modify windows and then another couple of tools show up. Same thing with doors. If you select a door, you're gonna to go to modify doors. So you could be over in insert playing around with all this kind of stuff. But if you click on a wall, it's gonna go straight to modify and it's gonna to go to the, the, bring up the additional wall modifiers as well. So, you know, edit profile, the wall opening, attached, detached, bottom base, top base, whatever modifier returns. There's all these little tools which are gonna show up because if you've selected a component and it's like, you know, edit families, stairs, same deal, edit stairs, it's gonna to go to the modify ribbon but it's going to have just a couple of other extra little extra little tools that are, are specific to whatever it is that you've selected so if you're ever wondering how you got to this ribbon if you've been hyper vigilant about ribbons then that's just because you've selected something it's going to go to modify walls modify floors 
modify, whatever, whatever you have selected. So look, that's it. Um, I'm sure you would have got something out of this video. There was a, there was a ton in there. It went for way, way longer than I was expecting to. So hopefully I'll be able to trim, trim a bit of this down. But, um, if not, there's just going to be a heap of content there for, for, uh, your Revit benefit. Thank you very much for your attention and your patience. And I hope you, uh, hope you enjoy the videos. If, uh, if you've ever got any feedback for me about, you know, if I'm too boring or too loud, too quiet, whatever, let me know in the, in the comments and, uh, yeah, thanks again for your patience. I hope you got something out of this and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.